Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So a lot of you have been f sending me links to things regarding anti-ownership practices since I've been talking about whether it's Amazon, Arlo cameras, or anything else that tried to take away your ability to use the product in the way that was advertised when you purchased it. This is becoming more and more common in, in very um, unconventional ways. So if you have this particular set of drone goggles, um, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about before I even get to the video. It says, Orca drone goggles bricked. Time bomb ransomware or unpaid firmware license. Drone racing goggles from Orca stopped working over the weekend due to what was alleged by the manufacturer to be a ransomware time bomb embedded in the hardware's bootloader by a greedy former contractor. Or, as the contractor put it, the code was provided under license, which had now expired, leading to shutdown of the kit. Orca makes a VR headset used to remotely control racing drones, and over the weekend it started receiving reports from FPV drone pilots in Japan, Europe, and Turkey about their techno specs were getting bricked. Initially, the device maker attributed this to a bug in the firmware that's affecting the daytime feature and causing the goggles to enter bootloader mode, according to their Facebook post. Later, the Croatia-based company ratcheted up their reddit with a ransomware claim. Within five or six hours into this crisis, Saturday early afternoon, we found this mysterious issue was a result of a ransomware time bomb, which was secretly planted a few years ago in our bootloader by a greedy former contractor, with an intention to extract exorbitant ransom from the company, according to an Orca public announcement posted Tuesday. If you plan a ransomware attack, but instead of calling your ransom, ransom, you very cunningly call it a license, your ransomware time bomb attack all of a sudden stops being a crime, the announcement continued. By that, Orca is referring to the contractor in question, insisting that no time bomb was placed in the bootloader and no ransom is demanded, and is instead asking for a license renewal payment for the code they provided. No valid license, no working code, and no working headsets. The contractor appears to be an outfit called Swarg, and in a Facebook post, that organization, also based in Croatia, gave its account of what happened with the Orca devices. Official statement. Swarg, as the copyright owner, implemented a time-limited license into the code used by Orca. The license had expired, which causes a, bl a blocked device until a new license is provided. To enable normal usage of the product, Swarg provides a license extension until July 1st, 2023. In the meantime, Swarg and Orca will hopefully reach an agreement about copyright and licensing. The statement, signed by Tomislav Zuzik, I apologize for butchering your name, CEO at Swarg, is dated April 29th. We note Orca and Swarg both have the same physical address, which looks like a small business park shared by multiple outfits. They have different tax ID numbers. While Swarg has offered its own firmware update to keep people using their devices running until July, Orca urged folks to not install the unofficial code and to instead wait for an official update, which restores headset operations. And I can kind of understand what they are, uh, what, what, what they're pushing for there. You know, they say we strongly discourage installing any former and not published by Orca. Further to this, if you think installing a fix consisting of a binary file posted by a person who is known to have already secretly planted a time bomb malware in firmware, please think again. Just kidding. You do not need to think. Just do not install it. I can understand where he's coming from. Now, uh, that said, Swarg believed it won't be easy for Orca to address the issue because, as the contractor put it, Q, why can't Orca publish a firmware that fixes the problem? Answer, because it's not their source code. The binary firmware and update files are encrypted with a custom one kilobyte block encryption that runs on a GPU part with, with no documentation for which there is no disassembly tool to reverse engineer the code. The provided tools by Swarg for firmware and update generation don't provide all aspects of the code capability. Neither Orca nor Swarg responded to the register's request for comment and to provide proof of a contract to support the licensing agreement's claims, or speculation that the code was written by a friend in the FPV company's early days and that friendship has since soured. Now, one of the things here that really makes it difficult to figure out who's the dick, is it Orca or Swarg, the company that was making the licensed code, is the fact that neither of them have been willing to provide an agreement. Again, if they were willing to say, here is the agreement that we signed, here's the docu-sign of it, here's where it says in, in plain text, this code is licensed for X period of time, without that, it's really difficult to say uh, who is at fault here. Now, when you take a look at their Facebook page in a browser that I've instructed to not allow cookies or anything else, you can see that it looks like they have published a fix. Whether or not they published this fix with the cooperation from Swarg or whether they figured out how to reverse engineer it, I honestly don't know. Uh, what I do know is that regardless of the fact, there's something fishy about the fact that neither company was willing to provide a copy of the license agreement. 
If one was and the other wasn't, it would be easy to say who was in the wrong here. But with neither companies being open to providing this at all, it really does make it seem fishy. The reason for Orca not releasing the license could be that they actually did sign this away, and the reason for Swarg not releasing the license agreement to the media could be that there is no license agreement, and they just made this entire thing up and are using it to extort more money out of somebody. I don't know which is the case. I genuinely don't know which is the case. One thing I am 110% certain of is that I would avoid buying anything from either of these two companies. This just seems like a really bad way to handle it all around. I would not trust either company. I again, if you are a company that's creating code with that particular license, I would see, I would imagine that you, especially if you're working in the same business park, you probably see each other at lunch every day, they'd be, "Hey, by the way, just so you know, thousands of your customers are going to have a broken device. We haven't really talked about the licensing agreement. Would you want to talk about it?" I would imagine having that type of conversation if we're talking about code and, and thousands of people's devices that are expensive that are going to brick them. Orca not realizing that this was the case or doing business with somebody that would inject that type of code into their devices causes me to massively distrust them as a hardware provider. So I'll be honest with you, reading through this, I would never want to do business with either Swarg or Orca. Neither of these people would I ever, ever, ever want to give money to after reading how both of them have went about this publicly and how both of them seemingly completely lack the ability to solve this behind closed doors. Maybe that makes me an asshole because maybe Orca is the victim here. I don't really have a way to know because, again, they never produced any of the licensing agreements that the media was asking for to try and get an idea of what was going on. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it's very, we already live in a time where anything that you are subscribing to, anything that you are connecting to a server can stop working properly at any given time. As I've said recently, you have Amazon that is turning off features and functionality of their fitness trackers in spite of the fact that these are, in many cases, devices that people bought last year and that they cannot get a refund for. You have them turning off features and functionality of the Ring doorbell unless you subscribe. But now... It's getting worse because you have devices that are not even connecting to a centralized server somewhere that are bricking themselves. And one of the things that I think you're going to see more consumers do that are tech savvy to stay safe is honestly just buy less of the high tech stuff. Like, like I, I don't I don't want to go near this in any way, shape or form. I don't want to go within five miles of a company or a company that's hired a company that's hired a company that's hired a company that in some way, shape or form has stopped something that I own from working after I've paid for it. And maybe that's not fair. Maybe I should really be interested in getting into the bottom of whether Orca or Swarg is at fault before saying I would not want to buy anything from any of these companies, or dare I say it, even a device in that particular industry until something like that is solved. But I'm just saying what I say. As a somewhat tech-savvy end consumer who is sick and tired of the you will own nothing and be happy world, yeah, I would just opt out of this shit to begin with. Again, when it like fitness trackers, stuff like that, I have absolutely, I have negative interest in having any sort of fitness tracker outside of a notes app, a mirror, and a scale. I have zero interest in any sort of smart home whatsoever outside of CCTV cameras that I install myself that run on my own effing NVR. And I, at this point, even, even drone goggles, I... I don't even want FPV drone goggles. If I'm going to get a drone, I want to get a drone that I could see fly. And I will use my own two eyes at this point because you genuinely cannot trust anything anymore. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Which company do you think is more to blame and why? That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I would not buy a piece of hardware from Orca and I would not hire a Swarg to write my code.